Well guys, we're on to another chapter. These are probably the engine blocks that we have abused the most. The first one here, this is the very first 4200 that we ever started playing with. This is the uh, 4.2 liter that was in my Studebaker for a long time. Uh, it's seen countless drag passes and I've made a lot of uh, tuning mistakes and all kinds of uh, learning experiences on that engine. At one point it hopped the timing chain a few teeth and uh, we actually bent some valves but we still kept running it and it still kept making good power so we kept running it and uh, we only recently took the thing out because it was time for a new chapter. And then the other one here, this is the engine that we made 824 horsepower with a totally stock engine. This is the one that threw the rod out the side of the engine. And uh, we kind of found the limits on the stock bottom end. I'm still not 100% convinced that 824 horsepower is all that you could get out of a stock engine, but just thought I'd film a little segment here of uh, we're putting these two legends to rest. All right, on to the video. All right, guys, today we're going to start work on our 1959 Volvo PV 544. If you guys haven't been following, two weeks ago we pulled this car out of a local junkyard and we are going to be transforming it into a lightweight drag car and participating at Sick Week 2023. Today we start the process of replacing some heavier components with some lighter weight components and specifically we are replacing the front suspension in the car with a more drag oriented setup. So let's show you what we did. All right guys, so in the effort to make the Volvo as light as possible, we are going to uh, get rid of the original front suspension. You can see it here, it's actually upside down right now, um, and it literally just unbolts from the car. Um, some interesting things to note about it is, look at how the shock is set up. It is attached to the upper control arm and the spindle, and because the lower A-arm and the upper A-arm have two different rates, uh, the thing still compresses, but it has a certain ratio to it. Um, normally what you would see is the shock would be attached to the lower control arm and the subframe, and it would simply compress with the suspension there. Um, the reason that we are getting rid of this is because the original geometry was pretty poor. The Ackerman, uh, we could tell just by looking at it, was not going to be very good. Um, and you need a car that's going to steer uh, correctly uh, to go the speeds that uh, we would like to go. Um, also, it has a fair amount of weight. And getting an upgraded brake system for a 63-year-old car that nobody really messes with um, probably isn't the easiest thing either. So let me show you what we're changing it out to. All right guys, so we are going to change out to some strange engineering uh, drag struts like what you see here. We bought these at a flea market and um, the idea with this is to make the system as light as possible. All right, normally when you're setting up a suspension like this, uh, a lot of people use something called a frame table um, or a chassis jig. It's basically some 2x3 um, box tubing usually in a uh, rectangular uh, shape that basically holds the car level and then you can make little attachments off of it to hold your spindle in the correct location. But dad had the idea of using the original frame as our chassis jig. So he bored a hole in the frame rail with a hole saw, same on the other side, and um, made some sleeves that slipped into the holes. And then on these spindles, they 
except a three quarter inch um, dowel, I guess you can call it. And that locates everything in relation to one another and basically squares everything up so that you don't have to uh, build a giant chassis table and have to fool around with that. And then from there, Dad modeled the strut tower up in CAD, otherwise known as Cardboard Aided Design, and drew out what we wanted the strut tower to look like. And then I bought a brand new uh, press brake, and we uh, made this out of 0100 steel. And then you can see that this side is already done. Uh, made it in uh, steel, and then we made the top here out of uh, 3 16 plate. So we just have to make the other side match, which is usually the hardest part. After we finished the strut towers, Dad also made this cross member here out of some inch and 5 eighths tubing. And then we will weld little tabs onto here to be our A-arm mounts. Um, and then there will be tabs welded to this tube up here. Um, it, Volvo was nice enough to put a nice tubular cross member in the uh, car from the factory. So um, that's race car stuff right there. They obviously intended for us to uh, do this with the car. So um, anybody that thinks we're ruining it, um, yeah, um, you're wrong. <laughs> All right, guys, so we have the front suspension finalized, um, at least for the uh, lower A-arm and the strut mount location, and we are starting to look at the steering. When you are doing projects like this, you need to be thinking uh, quite a few steps ahead. And because of that, we need to make sure that there is room for the steering rack around the engine. This engine is pretty tall and we're already starting to look at the hood clearance and it looks like that it's going to be a pretty tight fit. Okay guys, this weekend we put together the strut front end and now what we're looking at is trying to put the steering system in the car. But before we can do that, we don't know if it's going to be raised or lowered and the oil pan is going to limit how much vertical plate displacement we can have on it. So the next step is going to be placing the engine. We already know that we're going to move the engine back and this firewall being sloped the way that it is offers a lot of impedance that we need to work around. So we're going to move the engine back so that it's basically in line here. We want to retain as much of the firewall placement as possible in order to clear the steering and to allow for more uh, driver footwell room. We're moving the engine over. We originally are planning on only moving it one inch. Now we're thinking that we're probably going to be a little over an inch of offset. Because that is going to uh, reduce this area which we're okay with because that opens up this area for more intake we are looking at doing a log style manifold bring everything in have a side discharge with a v-band outlet place the turbo in this general location and route the exhaust system through this area. Alright guys, so we now have the strut tires done on the car. We talked about that a second ago. And we are laying out the steering as we were discussing before and we're kinda at the point where we need to start the roll cage. That may sound out of order to some people but the drive shaft tunnel of this car is a little different than the drive shaft tunnel on like a 68 Nova or something like that. This is basically where the chassis gets a lot of its stiffness. You know, this is a fully encased um, tube and it's kind of like the frame of the car. So in order to place the steering, we need to place the engine. 
and in order to place the engine we need to uh, start taking some of that structure out and uh, start cutting the firewall so we don't want the car to get too floppy so in order to make sure that the shell stays rigid we are going to start on the roll cage and put all that in and that will hold everything solid and then we will move on to the engine and then we will move on to the steering on the next episode of the Nivlac 57 Volvo build the Nelsons build a roll cage out of plywood? Will they meet their deadline of sick week 2023? We're gonna lose the shop! Stay tuned to find out.